How's everyone doing? Well, this is going to be interesting presenting upside down. Everybody's over here. So, um, a little bit about my background. Uh, just regular citizen. Have a passion for numbers. Um, you know, I enjoy this kind of stuff. So, I learned that there was a movement to have to reintroduce the city of South Fulton uh, from 2007. And I'm one of those people that you really just can't tell me anything. I mean, I'm going to listen to you, but I'm actually going to go back and check, especially if it deals with numbers and math, because that's kind of what I, what I like. Um, I read through every page of the feasibility study. Um, I actually correspond with Georgia State to talk to them about it, just to make sure I have a firm understanding. Um, one of my skills, I think, is taking things that may be complicated and making it kind of basic. So my goal here is really to try to give you information not going to try to steer you one way or the other, not going to lobby you, none of that kind of thing. I just want to give you information, let you go through the presentation, and then ask questions, and hopefully you'll get some honest answers. Is that fair enough? Yes, sir. All right. So again, I'm not going to kill you with PowerPoint. We're going to go over just four things. An overview of the special service district, what that actually means. We're going to talk a little bit about, a t about the tax and city structures. The feasibility study, I'm actually going to explain that and then give you a comparison of 2014 versus 2017. I think it's good for you to kind of get a comparison of where we are in relation to the first time this thing came up. And then after that, a quick Q&A. So um, I'm going to use my grandmother's approach. My grandmother has this slant saying that goes, the, the longest way around is sometimes the safest way home. So I'm going to take the long way in terms of explaining this. That way everyone can get the building blocks and kind of understand the full process and the terminology and acronyms. Don't want to beat you to death with terms. So we're going to start and just build all the way up. The first thing is we're, we're talking about unincorporated South Fulton County. And a lot of people, you know, may not know exactly what that means. And, and in terms of the difference between Fulton County, unincorporated South Fulton, the special service districts, what does that actually mean when we're talking about forming a city? So everything I talk about is going to be within the context of forming a city and the legislation of um, HB 165 that's actually being proposed. So first, you may not be able to see it here, but here's a map of the unincorporated South Fulton area. What that means is that this is an area that does not have a mayor or a city council. These are all the remaining parts. For the purpose of this conversation, unincorporated South Fulton County and special service district they're actually synonyms. They mean the exact same thing. The unincorporated South Fulton County has a special service, is treated as a special services district. So they're one and the same. So what does that mean in relations to funding or in relations to operation? The Fulton County General Fund is one, is one little pool and then there's the special service district fund. The special service district does not affect school operations. It does not affect county operations. It does not affect county bonds. What the special services district does affect are the police decisions, fire decisions, park decisions, and special initiatives. Special initiatives are things like, let's say a city wants to bring in investors and have a business incubator, do some type of economic development. That's a special initiative that's apart from the Fulton County General Fund. That's a kind of a local thing. So that's kind of a feel, and we're going to get a little deeper into this. Tax and city structures. Again, I'm going to give you basic explanations. There's going to be no financial jargon. I promise, here, I promise you're not going to leave here confused. So we're going to actually break down an actual tax statement and actually explain this stuff to you in basic terms. So the first one you should have is one called Sandy Springs. It should be highlighted, and I want to just go over a few, se few sections for you. So this is a tax bill for someone in Sandy Springs. I want to take a good look at it. What you have highlighted is it says City of Sandy Springs on the, on the top slash Fulton. It has a tax district of 59. And highlighted in green are the Fulton County taxes that a resident of, of Sandy Springs would pay. So there's a Fulton bond, Fulton operation, Fulton schools, general. And then you see the tax rate highlighted in green. Then at the bottom, what you see is something that says City of Sandy Springs slash Fulton Cycle. And then it says Sandy Springs .004731. Okay, you notice that? All right. Now pull out, keep this one in your hand, and pull out the one that says Unincorporated South Fulton. 
So I kind of want you to hold, hold one of them in your left hand and one of them in your right hand. So I want you to look at them kind of side by side. So the first thing you notice is different is it says unincorporated South Fulton County and the tax district is 55. But so far that's the only change. Nothing else has changed. You look at the Fulton County bond, the Fulton bonds, Fulton operation, Fulton schools, they're pretty much identical. Well, not pretty much, they are identical. The only difference is that this one says service district South Fulton and it has a, a rate up assigned to it of 0.12469. We're all in agreement so far? So when you compare them, they both pay the same Fulton bonds, they both pay the same Fulton op operating costs, they both pay the same amount for Fulton County Schools. The only difference is that Sandy Springs has a tax for city cycle. Unincorporated South Fulton has a special services district tax in the Fulton cycle. Only difference. On, on City of Sandy Springs, that line item is where their police, fire, um, and all those city-like services come from. So aside from paying for the schools, aside from paying for Fulton County bonds, aside from paying for the general fund of Fulton County, they run like a city. So they have a city hall, a mayor, council person, police department, fire department. Uh, all those wonderful things come out of that tax. Well, how does that work in South Fulton? Well, you notice that no one is paying that tax except unincorporated South Fulton. So one of the myths I want to dispel is that there's a belief that everyone countywide pays into the special services district tax pool, and that's not true. No different than someone in East Point wouldn't pay in Sandy Springs taxes. Sandy Springs wouldn't pay into someone in Roswell. Only the 88,000 plus residents of unincorporated South Fulton pay into that special services district. So I do want to clear that, that first myth up that everybody pays into the countywide funds, but only the folks in unincorporated South Fulton pay into the special services district. And you see that on the tax bill. So now the question becomes, what does that special service district tax actually cover? Well, what you have if you flip it over is an actual copy of the Fulton County special service district budget. In that budget, the very top line, you're gonna see property taxes. Those are only special services district taxes. So that revenue total that's circled and is highlighted in that kind of pink color, the special service district total budget is $45 million. Out of which, highlighted in green, orange, and in another color, shade of blue, they pay for their own fire, their own parks and recreation, their own police, their own planning. They pay for all of their city-like services just like any other city all by themselves. So I kind of want to want to kind of illustrate that a little bit again. So on, on a tax bill, if you live in the city, only you pay into that city tax pool and that pays for your police, your fire, your roads and all those other wonderful things that a city has to offer. Unincorporated South Fulton County is not a city, but they have a special service district tax and out of that pool, the 88,000 residents cover their own cost of city-like services. I want to explain that because that's another myth. Another myth is that if the new city forms, where's the police going to come from? Where's the fire going to come from? How are you guys going to make it? Where the service is going to come from? The truth is it's already being paid for. The only thing that happens is that those services transition from Fulton County into the city of South Fulton. So how that line item on the tax bill says special service district, if a city forms, it would just drop below the line, like Sandy Springs, it would say the city of South Fulton, it would be the exact same tax rate, and you would have, the, have a very similar structure in terms of fire, police, roads, and parks. So again, I don't want you to be misled or believe that someone other than the citizens are paying for their own fire, police, and, um, and parks, and all the other city-like services. Still with me so far? Again, building blocks. I want this to be very, very basic. So uh, up next, feasibility study. How many people have read the feasibility study or heard about the feasibility study? Okay. So what I get when, when I talk to people who read the feasibility study is that they kind of get little bits and pieces of the picture, but they don't get the whole picture. They might see one page that they understand, 
But out of the 17 pages, maybe eight or nine of them read in Greek or Hebrew to them, right? But the feasibility study is actually the elephant in the room because that determines whether a city or proposed city is actually financially viable, <coughs> whether it's able to sustain itself. So some high-level things about the feasibility study. That feasibility study was conducted by Georgia State University. So I want to make sure it's clear that it wasn't done by a political party. It wasn't done by a financial investor. That study was performed by Georgia State University. A feasibility study is a mandatory requirement in the process of forming a city. There's only, two eight, there's only two entities where the state will accept the studies. Georgia State, University of Georgia. The reason I'm putting that out there is because I want you to know that what I'm telling you today and all this information is based on what Georgia State said. It's based on what their economic researchers determined, and I'm sharing that information with you in just basic terms. So it's, it's really neutral, non-biased. They just want to put out a study, either a thumbs up or thumbs down. <clears throat> now, the way this study works is they actually give you three feasibility determinations. One is called the most conservative, which is based on using the lowest revenue projection and something called the DCA average. What the DCA average is, is there's, a, there's an organization in the Department of Georgia called the D Department of Community Affairs. They study how much each city should spend on police, how much each city should spend on fire, and on how much each city should spend on highways and roads. And they come up with a standard. And they use that as a metric to project will the new city be successful. So the most conservative one is based on using low revenue and DCA averages, just state averages. There's another one that uses DCA averages across the board. They use revenue averages, some aggressive DCA averages, and that's the second trend that they give you. And they're going to make a determination if you're financially viable in each one of those categories. The third one is based on your current trend. So they ask the question, what if this city forms and they don't change a thing? All those things you saw in the budget, they just kept them at the same level. How would they look if they just became a city and didn't do anything, just sat down and didn't do a thing? Well, based on those three metrics, the most conservative approach, the city could pay all of its bills, increase fire, not keep the same, increase fire, increase parks, increase roads, and have a surplus of over $3 million. So again, the question is, can the city pay for itself? Where's the money coming from? Georgia State said, not only can you form a city, you can increase parks and roads and be $3 million to the, to the good. But then they did the second, the second uh, um, formula and said, well, if you form the city and keep services the same, you'd actually have a surplus of $17 million. Meaning if we form the city and said we're not going to spend any of the extra money, we're going to keep service as the same, surplus is $17 million. The third one, if you just did everything at the state average, the surplus would be $6.8 million. To give you some perspective, Brookhaven formed their city in 2012 or 13. Their surplus was projected to be $2 million. $2 million. Our three metrics... Worst case scenario, $3 million. Best case scenario, $17 million. Middle case scenario, $6.8 million. We're financially feasible in all, three, in all three categories. So I want to kind of show you where this comes from. It's on pages three of the, of the, financial, of the, uh, of the feasibility study, and it's already highlighted for you. So if you go to page three, you'll see where it says there's a conservative number of $3 million. What's that's, what that's based on is a table on, on E1, which is also highlighted, where they show you the projected revenue and the projected expenses. Now, I mentioned that I was a financial steward, and my question became, how do we know if these numbers are real? If just because they put it on paper and it's Georgia State, I believe it, but I still want to verify this. So what I did was I compared their projected revenue in the feasibility study to the actual 2015 Fulton County budget that was released. And in that study, they projected almost $3 million low 
So let me explain what that means. That study is financially viable by all those millions of dollars, and they shortchanged revenue by three million. So the budget in there reflects 42 million. The actual, the actual SSD, as you see in that budget, is at about 45 million. So for that reason, revenue is pretty realistic, I mean, because it's, it's matching with the budget. The next question is how are they doing on expenses? So the SSD budget for fire, parks, and police totals $31 million. That's on page 8. Georgia State projected $32 million. So they used lower revenue, higher expenses, and still came out with a positive city. And I'm comparing that to the actual SSD budget. The next question became with the, with the DCA averages. And let me explain why that's important. They projected a 20% increase in police. A 20% increase in police. They projected a 5.88% increase in fire and a 38% increase in roads and highways. And they still came up with $6.8 million positive. Under the most conservative number, after doing all that increase, they came up with $3 million worth of the surplus. It's all in the study. It's all highlighted. So the next thing I did, I said, okay, well, this is great. But are we moving forward or are we moving backwards? So what I did was I went and pulled the old 2007 feasibility study. Can you pass it out? Mm -hmm. It was done by Georgia State as well. So the same group who looked at this stuff in 2007 took a fresh look at it 2013. And keep in mind, the bill, the bill in 2007 passed. <coughs> It actually passed, made it to the referendum. People had an opportunity to vote. I'm going to give everyone a chance to look at the, the back side of that so you can see what the conservative, middle, and high numbers were when the state decided, yep, it does make sense to move forward with this bill. If this bill happens, we have a reasonable assurance that the city would actually make it. And what you'll find is that the most conservative number was 407,000. The middle number was 878,000. And if they had formed the city in 2007 and left it alone, it would have been 13 million. What this means is that right now we are 658% higher than the most conservative number from 2007. Let me explain that difference. We will have six and a half times more money left over than we would have in 2007. That bill passed, but this bill, people are asking, is it really viable? Same group of people did it. If we sat on the money and did nothing, 33% higher. And if we moved everything to the middle, 674% higher. So again, worst case scenario, you're 33% better, 33% more viable than you were in 2007. 